Hi friends, here in this video, I will be explaining the dial indicator. So, let's get started. Now, here is the diagram of the dial indicator. This diagram shows the internal construction of the dial indicator. It means this diagram is not an external feature of the dial indicator. It shows the internal construction. And what is basically a dial indicator? It is a device or we can say it is a device which is basically operates on mechanical principle and it is used to measure fluctuations in any given surface that is it would be just checking the flatness of a particular surface either if it is flat or if it is rough and how it carries this out we can just see it with the help of the diagram here basically the various parts are I'll just explain them step by step this P indicates the plunger that is here is the plunger also called as the probe plunger or probe is that part which is in contact with the rough surface so here I will just draw a rough surface with which the plunger is in contact that is this is the surface whose flatness we have to check so we are using the dial indicator a mechanical device which does not require any external source or power supply next after the plunger we have this plunger is having internal teeth that is internal gear teeth are cut inside this plunger and these these gear teeth are called as rack as we see here denoted by r it means it is a rack also called as a linear gear or also called as the gear with infinite number of teeth so plunger carries the rack now with this rack there is a gear denoted as gear a which is in mesh next a gear a and gear b they are mounted on the same shaft as we can see into this diagram then gear b which is a bigger gear is in mesh with gear C and C and gear D they are mounted on the same shaft so their rotation would be same then D is in mesh with gear E as we can see here and E carries the pointer as we can see denoted by PO that is the pointer and this is the dial of the dial indicator after that we have gear F which is in mesh with gear E that is after the reading has been taken then gear F carries a helical spring as we can see here it is basically we can say a helical spring or a torsional spring which is given over here and then here we have G which is nothing but the balancing weight and at the same time here we have another spring which is provided so that it keeps the plunger always in contact with the rough surface so that was the constructional detail now how the functioning of it takes place first of all when we are moving we have to just move this dial indicator horizontally on the surface whose roughness or flatness has to be checked so when we are moving this dial indicator along with this waviness this plunger would be reciprocated in the upward or downward direction so I am taking an example that if the plunger moves up the rack which is inside the plunger is in contact with gear A so the rack would be rotating gear A in an anti-clockwise manner as we can see here there is anti-clockwise rotation of gear A since A and B are on the same shaft even gear B would be rotating in an anti-clockwise sense B is in mesh with C so since B and C they are external gears so the direction of rotation is opposite it means when B rotates anti-clockwise C rotates in a clockwise manner and as C and D they are onto the same shaft so even D rotates in a clockwise manner and D is in mesh with gear E so if D rotates in a clockwise sense E rotates in an anti-clockwise sense and along with that the pointer moves in an anti-clockwise direction and when the pointer is moving in an anti-clockwise direction that is if it is shifting from the zero reading or the zero position 
इट मीन्स दैट देर आर वीवीनेस प्रेजेंट और द सरफेस इज नॉट एंटायरली फ्लैट दैट इज डायल इंडिकेटर इज दैट इंस्ट्रूमेंट विच इज नॉट यूज to take the reading basically it is a gauge it will just show us whether the surface is flat or not and that can be indicated by just the movement of the pointer that is if the pointer is at zero position it means the surface is perfectly flat but the way the pointer has been moving if it starts moving then we can say that the surface is rough so basically it is just used to check whether the surface is flat or not indicated by the pointer so it is a device or a gauge which just gives us the deflections it doesn't give us the entire reading next apart from that once the reading has been we that is once we have denoted or we have noted the deflections then here we have gear f also which carries the helical spring as we can see here so the function of this helical spring is when e has been rotated and the pointer moves in an anti clockwise sense so to bring it back into the clockwise direction we have this helical spring which would be releasing the energy and then e when it is rotating anti clockwise now it will start rotating in a clockwise manner and then the pointer returns to its original position at the same time with the help of this spring we can keep the plunger always in contact with the rough surface so in short that was an explanation regarding the dial indicator this was a mechanical dial indicator even the digital dial indicators are available but here in case of mechanical no external power or energy source is required and with the help of multiple gears we can magnify the reading that is even the small amount of deflection is indicated by the huge movement of the pointer on the dial so number of gears increases the we can say the mechanical advantage increases or the reading get amplified so in case of mechanical instruments if we want to amplify the reading or to make the instrument more sensitive we should have more number of gears for amplification so that was an explanation regarding the dial indicator at the end if you all find my videos helpful you all can like share comment and subscribe our channel and share it amongst your family and friends thanks for watching